So if you give it water and sunlight, it'll grow. Yeah. Mm, still cool as Guys, I got me some coffee. Do I look important? It's empty anyway. Uh, welcome back. It's been a great run. It's been a great week. Um, I missed ya. Um, Jeremy, I haven't really heard from him today, but he said, he didn't really say anything. I haven't heard hey, from him. He uh, should be here soon. Sarah, is it? Yeah. Casey, we've known each other for like a year. Sure. Uh, Jeremy's actually not going to be able to come this week. Why not? Mm hmm So I'll see ya. Casey, you can't just say that and leave. You haven't even been here in like a month. Yep, see you in four weeks. Okay, so I'm in charge for the week. Aren't you so lucky? I can't do this. Sarah, Sarah, why are you so nervous right now? I've never done this before by myself. Jeremy's always here. He's always like, oh, Sarah, this is how we produce. And I mean, now he's not here to say that. Yeah, good impression, but this is really easy, okay? These people are idiots. They're just like kids. It's almost like babysitting. Yeah, but I hate babies. I hate kids. I know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. So just just pretend like it's any other meeting, okay? Right. Yeah, yeah. meeting because after the story. Just... Yeah, yeah. It's Who words. has a story for me? David. That's my job. David. I did it. Okay. Yeah, Sarah. Uh, I read in the news that this one guy tried to. Go... I got. I got go 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 go. I'm sorry. Did you just have a stroke? Matt Hungy. Me too. From the Franklin Hall studio at Kent State University, it's The Agenda. And now, here's your host, Alex Herz. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alex Herz, and this is The Agenda. We have a great show for you tonight, but first, I want to say that this upcoming Sunday, March 8th, is my B-Day. And I usually wouldn't make a big deal about myself. I don't tend to do that. But I work with a lot of really funny and genuinely nice and creative people on this show, so it wouldn't be out of the question, say, if the cast and crew threw like a giant surprise party for me just out of nowhere. You know, it could happen at any minute. That's how surprise parties usually work. So I'm just gonna just gonna put this here hat on, you know, just in case, you know, they come out and like yell surprise, like I just wanna be ready. So come on out, guys. No, well, that makes sense. It'll probably happen when I least expect it. So uh Let's just do the show until then. A businessman from Colorado is selling shirts printed with the appearance of guns inside holsters. They're shipped with a disclaimer warning customers that the gun looks real even from short distances, so they should wear them with caution. Rumor has it that the salesman is currently working on his next masterpiece, a shirt covered in images of clocks and dynamite. Let's hope he doesn't have to take a plane anytime soon. A new selfie stick gives hope, help, hopes to help women get to know their vaginas a little better. The Sfagcom Gaga Selfie Camera Vibrator allows users to FaceTime their partners to capture clear footage during orgasm. Many of you can no longer fake it, ladies. Sci-Fi's original movie Sharknado 3 will be coming out this summer, and the cast list is definitely interesting. 
Among the cast list is Ann Coulter, InSync's Chris Kirkpatrick, and Jerry Springer. The film takes an interesting turn at the end when the shark finds out that he is indeed the father. A website known as Serial Killer Inc. allows its people to purchase memorabilia from their favorite serial killers. Reports show that the site recently sold panties for murder Samantha Bazinski for $300. What's most disturbing about the story is that a woman's pair of dirty underwear costs more than my entire wardrobe. Well, Tinder has been getting a lot of heat lately from their new policy which requires users ages 30 and over to pay for the service. Here to help us and give her, her thoughts on it, avid Tinder user Lucy. Welcome, Lucy. Hi, Alex. Oh, I love your tie. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Uh, that's very nice. It makes you look like a sexual aardvark. Well, that doesn't make much sense, but, but that's highly inappropriate. I'm sorry. I'm just really excited to be here. I've seen the show, and you're very funny. Well, wow. Two compliments. I'm on a roll tonight. Now, I have to say, it's really nice when guests are so warm and friendly. <laughs> My pleasure. All right. Well, and then we should talk about... Well, we've... Uh, we're really running low on time, so... Well, we can make up for it. How about tomorrow at 8? You like Chinese? Well, I, I mean, I'm not a man who would ever really turn down an egg I roll. mean, we could get uh, chicken chow mein if we're feeling very dangerous. I'll be the one wearing a tube top. Oh, okay. Well, no, Lucy. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. You seem like a really great woman, but I, I'm actually happily married. Oh, so. I see. Yeah, this is a little awkward, but so are most of my social interactions. So, so why don't you tell me more this about is Tinder? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! I can't even get you, you of all people, seriously. Oh wow! I mean, that's a little uncalled for. I don't really. I'm hopeless, doomed to be alone for eternity. Tinder is charging everyone over thirty a nineteen dollar ninety nine cent user fee. My birthday is in four days. Guess how old I'm turning? Well, my mom told me to never ask a lady your age, but... Uh... Yup, the big 3-0. And you know what? I don't have $20. I have $12. And no boyfriend, no potential contenders either, unless you call someone that texts you at 3 in the morning looking for a romp in the sack of boyfriend. But guess what? I don't have that either. I'm just going to end up a lonely sack with sad, shriveled up uterus and a mother permanently breathing down her neck, all because this four over here is married. All right. Well, you know what, Lucy? That's all the abuse that this guy can take for one night. <sighs> Goodbye, Lucy. Thanks for saying happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> Girls like her are the reason why I used Christian Mingle. We'll be right back. What time is it? Oh man, did you just wake up too? Oh no, we missed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If only there was a way we could have all three. Oh, but there is. Introducing Chunkos from Kellogg's. Chunkos? What's that? It's the brand new cereal that combines breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so you never have to worry about missing a meal again. That doesn't sound real. Yeah, I don't believe that. Well, kids, let me show you. Wow! Simply grab a bowl, pour the chunkos, Season it with flavor packet of your choice, ranch, garlic, barbecue, or dusted mango habanero. Pour in that milk and dig in, you stupid mother Mmm, garlic! Mmm, dusted mango habanero. But wait, there's more! For the beef lovers in town, try Kellogg's new Milky Burger and Fries Combo Chunkos. Thanks, Chunkos! <laughs> Chunkos, a meal in your milk. Now at participating Kmarts. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest beat moments beat can have the biggest beat impact beat on a beat child's beat life. Beat a little bit rowdy, R-O-W, woo, D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. All those boys are much too much, those boys. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. Where's the surprise party? 
Okay, a floating strip club in Alaska was shut down after accusations of its owners dumping their sewage into a nearby harbor. The owner denies the accusation, saying, nah, man, it always smells like that. Just take a whiff of Tiffany. In tech-related news, it looks like Samsung's new Galaxy S6 phone will feature a curved screen. Samsung stated that the design choice was intentional, unlike the iPhone 6. The town of Grantsville, Georgia, made famous by AMC's The Walking Dead, is now for sale. For a mere $700,000, you can now own the town of the undead. Just be sure that your governor isn't wearing an eye patch. Recently, artist Anthony DVS announced his plans to raise enough money the city of Hell, Michigan, which he will use as a temperature-controlled building to show year-long exhibition. Here to comment on this, the devil himself, Mr. Satan. Thanks for coming on. Hi, Alex. Uh, please, my father was Mr. Satan. You can, you can call me Chris, or as uh, some of my friends like to call me, you know, the anti-Chris. Huh? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, anyway, I'm actually glad that you invited me today here today. I have an axe to grind all over this uh, buying hell business. Really? Well, why is that? Oh, yeah. I'm sick and tired of people making light of hell. I mean, it is literally the dwelling place of evil, fire, brimstone, and roommates who don't remember to put the seat down. If there's one place that's supposed to make you feel dread, pain, and sorrow, it is hell. The people of Michigan thought it would be fun to make this town named Hell. During the winter, it's all, oh, look like Hell froze over. And then during the summer, it's all like, oh, it's hotter than Hell over here. Ha, 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 ha. Well, let me tell you, Hell is actually a cool 60 degrees with a slight breeze. It's stereotypes like that that really just give Hell a really bad name. Yes, and snowballing off of that, also the eternal fate of damnation, you know, may have something to do with it. Yeah, but we have some damn good coffee. Huh. All right. Well, wonderful. So how do you feel now that hell is full of artists? Oh, it's been full of us for a long time, Alex, along with serial killers, 4chan users, and people who use hashtags while texting. I, I, meant, I meant the town in Michigan. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just another gimmick. People think it's fun to poke fun at hell. Well, you just wait. If America ever elects another conservative in the next election, you'll know what hell's really like. Well, Chris, I had no idea that you were just so political. <laughs> anyway, I gotta go. I left Hitler on the stove, and I gotta get back before he boils over and makes a mess. Hey, thanks again, and I'll be seeing you real soon. Wait, you're gonna see me? What do I do to go to hell? Oh. Uh, I, I thought that didn't count if I, if I went to church. Oh, no. Sorry, birthday boy. Oh. Hang in there. Well, the devil remembered my birthday, so that's pretty cool. Well, I'm gonna go pray a little bit harder. Recently, Alexis Ohanian, co-founder of the popular internet site Reddit, sat down for an interview with the infamous man with two penises, a condition otherwise known as diphalia. The man, who wishes to remain anonymous, said it was very hard growing up with two genitalia. But we're here at the agenda, wanted to let him know that he's not alone. Sir, if you're watching this, this one's for you. When you have diphalia, where do you want to go? Nowhere. Who do you want to see? No one. Who do you want to have sex with? Not even Kate Upton. And you know she's hot. Diphalia can make a man feel isolated, detached, like a freak of nature. Even your doctor is afraid of you. But you are not alone. Diphalia affects nearly five and a half million American men each day. Don't let Diphalia hold you back, because there are millions of men out there just like you. Men who aren't getting laid. Those men who are. Embrace your diphalia because two heads are better than one. Can you come sit with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read.
Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back to the agenda. Former Secretary of State and possible 2016 presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is under scrutiny this week for using a personal email address for work instead of the standard government address during her time as Secretary of State. And uh, I have a message for the news media, which leads us to our favorite segment, Oh, uh, wait a minute, pal. I don't think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> news media? Oh, uh, wait a minute, pal. I don't think you know what you're talking about. You call this a scandal? Now, I know that obviously something like this should not have happened. You know, the government email addresses and positions such as hers are the norm, and using a personal email address was most likely done intentionally, which does raise questions as to what she's trying to hide. But this is not as interesting as some people want it to be. What annoys me most about this story is anti-Hillary Clinton supporters are using it as a way to prove to people that this means Hillary Clinton is the scum of the earth. I don't know much about politics. She, may is, she might be scum of the earth, but I do know that this is not a good enough scandal to really prove anything about anyone. I want something juicier, you know? Think of some of history's greatest scandals. Think of Hillary Clinton's husband, actually, Bill Clinton, who had one of the most notable political scandals, scandals of all time. And that was all because of his big, stupid penis. Never before had a presidential penis been so notable. People still make Monica Lewinsky jokes, and that happened in 1995. Now that's a scandal. Something else that really annoys me with this scandal is that people are referring to it as email gate. Here's a little tip news media. Watergate was the name of the hotel involved with the Nixon scandal. Not everything that happens that needs to have a gate at the end of it. Also, don't refer to footballs being deflated as deflate gate because honestly sports are really boring. So let's just wait until Clinton actually does something horrible until we call it the next big scandal. So in conclusion, news media, uh, wait a minute, pal. I don't think you know what you're talking about. That was fun. Citizens of Louisville, Kentucky finally discovered what was causing the town to smell like mildew for the past week. It turns out it was naturally occurring chemical called geosmin found in the soil. Well, that's all good and dandy for them, but unfortunately for the citizens of Kent, we're still trying to figure out what makes the city smell so bad. So we sent our very own reporter, Lucas Mansfield, to get the scoop. Small towns, big smells presents Kent. You smell it. After dark. Kent State, a college city as diverse as it is smelly. Everywhere a stink of higher education can be found. City officials pride themselves in how clean their trash cans are. This is because everyone throws their trash in the cigarette bins. Just because the sun isn't up doesn't mean the smells go down. Here on the Esplanade, it still manages to smell like dirty feet, even though it's zero degree weather. Except for this. This still smells like bullshit. Even the neighborhoods have their own unique musk about them. Take College Street, for example. This demilitarized zone of a neighborhood smells like spilled booze, hard drugs, and dirty feet. While this dark and intimidating street smells like danger, low income, and of course, dirty feet. If I was a brave man, I would get a closer sniff. If I was a braver man, Downtown Kent is also a buzz with the stinky smell of industry. As new buildings pop up, work crews have been digging down. However, just like the rest of Kent, it still smells like dirty feet. Kinda makes you wonder what they dug up. Was it a dinosaur? Some eldritch horror? A big pile of old feet? Who knows? Ah yes, Acorn Alley, where the warm smells of fresh food and popcorn are completely covered up by the smell of feet. On a side note, it's also home to the Black Squirrel statue. Nobody knows where it came from or why it's here. They say if you look into its eyes, you go mad. So don't do it. Hey, what did I just say? Over here is some strange factory. I don't know what it makes, but it sure does smell like feet. I'm going to call it the Foot Factory. I heard screaming come from over here a few minutes ago. After the screaming stopped, I came over here to take a whiff. Big surprise, it smelled like feet. It was around this time that I started getting followed around by these black buses. Despite all the macabre and weird things I've seen today, I still can't explain why this whole town smells like dirty feet. Just another one of life's little mysteries. I'm Lucas Mansfield, and this has been... Kent, you smell it? After dark. 
You know, all this time I thought it was the smells of failure and overpriced campus food. We'll be right back. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of finding someone to invest in his vision? One in 4.5 million. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Two men from Toronto were discovered in an underground cave, which the police originally believed was a stunt and a threat to public safety. Turns out the men just wanted to build a man cave and have a good time. Police have not released the men's names, so we've decided to call them cavemen for now. To hear their side of the story, please welcome the cavemen. Thanks for having us up here, Alex. Yeah, I mean, speaking of names, is it, is it possible to get yours? Well, our lawyers told us not to give out any personal information, so you can call me Chip. <laughs> you can call me Dale. <laughs> like the chipmunks, how adorable. So, yeah. was there a lot of scrutiny over this man cave? There was even theories that you two were building a zombie hideout, or we're just too poor to live anywhere else? Oh, no, 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 man. We built it as a place to hang out, just a couple cool guys, you know, bros to chill, man. Like our man cave we had back at Delta Beta Pi. DB Pi! Hmm. That's right. Oh, you know, just a place to do some manly things, you know? Well, what kind of things did you do? Well, we mostly drink beer, uh, talk about sports, watch sports, you know, guy stuff. I mean, yeah, we wrestle sometimes, but that's just for fun. And if The Bachelor happens to come on when we're doing it, all the more motivation, you know? We gotta kick that guy's ass. Because he is not treating Cassandra right. You can say that again. He is not treating Cassandra right. Interesting. Uh, but do you guys even have room for furniture down there? I imagine you don't have much space since it's so small. Actually, we can fit a lot. Like a literal buttload. We just kind of cram stuff wherever it fits. Yeah, as long as you, like, don't disturb the aura of the cave. The aura of the cave. Yeah. You know, like, like how its energy flows and stuff. Like it's chi, you know? The chi, okay. Are yeah. you guys down there a lot? Just any time we want to get wasted or work out and listen to Drake or cuddle. Whoa! No, 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 no. Muddle. Muddle, he means muddle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a bartender. That's pretty cool. Are you planning yeah. on uh, putting a bar in, inside the cave? Oh, yeah, dude, totally. We're even going to like open it up to the public and get a real rager going. Wednesdays are dudes' night. That's right. We only let in dudes. Only dudes. Well, I'm only 19, so I don't really understand the whole bar scene, but are, isn't it for you know guys to meet women mostly? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> we just want a place to be bros, for bros, you know? All right, well, that looks like all the time we have. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming here, boys. Stay yeah. sweet. Bye. Well, now I understand why my dad won't let me in his man cave. Because there's beer down there. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it for tonight's episode. We're pretty much out of time. So that big birthday surprise will probably be happening you know, any second. Um, right? Right, guys? Right? Anybody? Okay, well, happy birthday, Alex.